Welcome back, Yemi. Thank you so much for no letting us screen the film. Um, it's really terrific. It's a film with so much energy. Um, and I know it took you a really, really long, long time to make the film. I've heard six years. Is that, is that true? Was the process that long? Yeah, I think it was about six or seven years. Um, it was, yeah, it sort of like started off as, as this labour of love. And we knew that we weren't just going to get a film made. And, you know, we just kind of, it was, it was an independent in, endeavour. You know, it was just me, uh, two producers, Will Thorne. Michael Marden and yeah we just kind of like embarked on this really crazy idea to sort of like make this happen um so yeah it was about six to seven years it, it's a film that is I mean of course it's about Michael Jordan but it's a film that sort of takes in so many sort of rich themes and points and you know from the commodification of that culture to mm. lack of corporate responsibility in marketing to young mm. people mm. Um, to the rise of sort of black celebrity and, mm. um, and you know sports celebrity and media celebrities in particular in the 80s and 90s did you always know that Michael Jordan would provide that sort of lens on so many different important issues? Yeah, I thought so. I mean, I was obsessed with the time in which this all took place, you know. So I've always had a weird fascination with American culture, just America as a whole, but particularly like the 80s and the 90s. I was completely obsessed with, you know, those decades. I, I you know, I was born in 83, so I kind of like grew up in, you know, the late 80s and the early 90s. So I, you know, me and my sister sort of had a healthy dose of like American culture when we were growing up in Southeast London. And and that's what we saw on the TV and that's what we heard, you know, in our kitchen, on the radio. Um, and, you know, it's the things that my mum and dad would play. So I was, yeah, I, I was obsessed with those, those decades and I kind of like wanted to find a sweet spot that I connected to sort of, you know, as a, as a filmmaker. And, you know, we, I remember being like 13, 14 and just remembering sort of like the impact of Michael Jordan, this guy that sort of like transcended everything, this guy who was, you know, the most marketed sports personality in, you know, in history. So I was always like kind of fascinated with, with him, but then also with everything else that was happening around the time as he was sort of on the rise to the top. Um, so yeah, it, you know, I, I think the politics element is really interesting, like what was going on socially, what was going on in inner cities across the US, you know, and then what was sort of like going on in pop culture, you know, it was kind of like the time of the first African American celebrity, it was the time of sort of, it was the time that rap music made its like, you know, mass sort of like market you know, breakthrough. So all of these things were really important to me. And I kind of like wanted to find a way of not making a fluff piece, not making a film that was just kind of like one dimensional about this, you know, incredible basketball player, but something that encapsulated everything that was happening at the time and how he sort of like had an impact on all of those different things and how all the parallels sort of like ran, you know, kind of uh, by each other sort of thing. So, yeah. yeah. And over that process of the six years of making it, um, did it, it did it start? It sounds like it started out with all those sort of themes and points that you wanted to address. But were there any particular challenges in um, sort of getting interviews or um, or being able to speak to some of the people that you needed to speak to to, to make the film? Yeah, I think you know we we're essentially free British. Uh, filmmakers you know and and I think it was quite an ambitious task to sort of like track down all of these people who were either ex sort of like Nike executives or who were around Michael Jordan when he was sort of like Michael Jordan in terms of like bigger than Coca-Cola bigger than God bigger than everything um, and I think the challenges just came from the fact that yeah we didn't have much money and you know we didn't really have uh access but we just had the internet and just like articles and you know just a lot of perseverance to track down all of these contributors and I think if someone would have get, given us you know x amount of money to make this film in 2014 and 
you, they would have said that you need to finish this film in like you know 18 months like it wouldn't be the same film that you know you've watched and you know that that is in the festival I think the fact that we had so much time was like frustrating at you know at times but it allowed us to sort of like make the film that we wanted to make it allowed us to sort of like get the contributors that we wanted to get it's kind of like you know not everybody is going to say yes initially to being in your documentary and we found that a lot you know so uh yeah it, it was challenging but we just sort of like persevered with it and you know i think that you, the more that you have conversations with people i think they know your intentions and they know sort of like you know that that you that you you want to do something good and you kind of like you know you want to tell a story that hopefully you know people want to sort of know and i think that that plays a, a big part in it as well, just getting the trust of people. Um, and I think it's hard to sort of like do in short periods of time. So we had this like long period and I think we got people on side. So I think that made it um, a little bit easier. Was getting Michael to do an interview ever ever part of the plan, or did you always feel like that was out of, out of scope for? Yeah, for no, time? no, that was it was it was never part of it was never part of my thinking to ever have Michael, just because of the fact that where the film sort of goes at the end, I kind of the third act of the film, you know, I I, I just never thought that you know it would be impossible to do that to ha to have him involved. Um, so yeah it was never something that i ever considered but i always wanted to get the people that were closest to him around that time so not just sort of um you know people that were in the room like really reliable storytellers and contributors that like like knew him or like even like still know him to to this day you know S like uh david falk still has a really good relationship who david falk was michael jordan's agent you know, so he still has a relationship with him. And it was just important to have those really, uh, you know, authentic sort of authoritative like voices and, and you know, just that you can trust um, yeah. as opposed to just having, you know, just people that are into sneaker culture or influencers. It, it was so much more than this. It was sort of like a story about this this company and, and what this company like went on to to, to, to achieve, you know, in terms of change in the landscape when it came to sort of like athletes and sports endorsement deals. So it was just really important that we kind of like had the right storytellers. Yeah. Um, I, I love that you said um, that what you did with the third act, because when I watched it for the first time, I, I wasn't expecting quite the sort of punch, punch in the stomach that you get yeah. in the last, and it's really, really powerful. Did you mm. always conceive of structure of the film like that, that it would sort of lull you into this sense that you're watching a, a something that was about pop culture and then it will become something sort of strongly political at the end end of the film i i think so i think you know myself and 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 the editor michael we we battled with it for a long time it was always the thing that you know we kind of like pushed off in the corner like in terms of like we were scared to sort of like approach it that, but we knew that we had to sort of like handle it and we never really knew how we wanted to do it until you know I think there was a, like you know one evening in the edit we just sort of like said you know let's just do it like this let's just be brave and do it like this because I, I kind of feel that we needed to provide the context we need to we needed to provide you know all of the sort of like you know the bells and the whistles and sort of like the slam dunks and sort of like how incredible that time was but then we needed to sort of like talk about this element as well. It, I, I, I kind of feel like it would have been irresponsible of us as sort of like filmmakers not to go there. Yeah. And, you know, we, we, we're not, we didn't go there with an agenda. Everything yeah. in the third act of the film is sort of like fact, but we just kind of wanted to lay it down. Like, you know, this is an incredible sneaker that is sort of like eclipsed everything. But unfortunately there is this sort of like, you know, there is this, this this history that yeah. has you know that gone along with the the sneakers legacy that you know we can't we have to explore because yeah. it, it, it's it's right for us to do that so yeah, yeah I, I think we we 
there was a point that we kind of, you know, we were just at peace with how we'd structured the film. Um, but I think initially we grappled with it a bit, you know, I have to be honest, we did grapple with it. We didn't know whether to put it at the front or in the middle or, you know, ha like how would it work with pacing? But I think ultimately it always came down to the fact that our entry point to this film as filmmakers was just like, we were fans. Like, you know, we all like Will, Michael, myself, we all sort of like grew up in the eighties. We all remember Michael Jordan being larger than life. We all remember sort of like having like Chicago Bulls jackets and sort of like, you know, Air Jordan sneakers in, in the 90s. So it was kind of like our entry point was fandom. And that's why we wanted to tell the story. But we also had to sort of like, you know, not ignore the fact that this other stuff happened as well. I'm from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. So, you know, okay. what God, God hears in my head. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. Um, yeah. But who were you most proud of? What what interview was the hardest to get and that sort of really unlocked a lot for you? Um, I think the interviews that kind of like, I just can't believe we got were sort of like David Stern, NBA commissioner, uh, you know, sadly no longer with us, who passed away in January. And, you know, he deserves as much credit as sort of like Nike and, and, and Michael Jordan in terms of like, you know, he sort of commercialized the NBA. You know, we have, the NBA is what it is today because of David Stern. Do you know what I mean? He, he was a, a genius marketeer as Nike sort of like were. And he, he, he was just, he revolutionized that league. So I think to get him in New York, I think we got him last May, was just incredible. And he was so gracious with his time and just a lovely man. Um, so that was an incredible interview. David Folk was amazing, um, obviously, because, you know, he was Michael Jordan's agent. He, you know, he, he was, he came up with, you know, Air Jordan, it, he coined that, that was David Falk. So he was, it was amazing to sort of like have him, uh, obviously Sonny Vaccaro, just a legend. Um, Roland Lazenby, who uh, obviously is Michael Jordan's biographer. Like these people were just like incredible. But then also, you know, Daisy Williams as well. You know, like I think I met her, I, I want to say in like 2013. And, you know, she was just so, uh, generous with her time despite what she was going through you know yeah. it was I think that the, it was still very raw what she was experiencing and she was just very uh, generous with her time and 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 with all of her stories and what she wanted to share with us as filmmakers so has she seen the final film yeah she has seen the film and um, I think she's sort of proud that you know her 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 family her son's legacy is sort of there and, and and hopefully it brings awareness to a situation that unfortunately still happens but i think you know it's it's mad but it it that it still does happen but it it does unfortunately yeah and you i've seen some of your shorter work so most of your work um well a lot of your work deals with sport and culture but there's always i i've it's i'm struck by the fact that there's always a real interest in um, sort of social justice, you know, you've mm. investigated housing, mental health. <laughs> yeah. um, is this something that you see as sort of like the two prongs of your, your work, this sort of interest in pop culture, but this sort of political um, engagement as well too? Yeah, I think it's definitely a, a sweet spot just to sort of, I like stories that are multi-dimensional and, and multifaceted and sort of like tell us more than one thing about the world. And I like that false sense of security that you think something is about one thing, but the, you kind of like keep peeling it back and then actually it's about all of these other things. And I've always really been interested in stories that sort of like do that and, and make people like, you know, look at subjects in a, in a, in a different way. So yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know definitely that I'm it's definitely a sweet spot for me in terms of like storytelling and subjects yeah and what about so you're you're from London London mm. Film Festival lots of young filmmakers sort of mm. watching your film yeah. what advice would you have to to them about how to get into film and how to make how to make this dream of being a filmmaker come true oh you need to like yeah you just need to just do it I think I, and that sounds like like mad just do it but like I, I, it just you need to sort of just go out into the world and tell your stories and and just be really selective 
who you kind of like listen to, you know, because I think if we'd listened to like half of the things that people were telling us on this journey to making this film, we just wouldn't have made it. And I think you just need to sort of like have a belief in your own abilities and then also just have a group of collaborators that believe in the story that you want to tell as much as you do. Because I think, you know, I think that's how things get made. You, you know, you can't do everything by yourself. And I think just surrounded your, surrounding yourself with like-minded collaborators is really important. Like Will and Michael, like, you know, it just wouldn't have got, this film wouldn't have got made without them. You know, Will produced it and Michael produced it and edited it as well. And I think that they were crazy enough to sort of like believe in the film as much as I did. Um, so I think, yeah, just surrounding yourself with like-minded people and then just having really just having perseverance you know just knowing that things perhaps might not work out in the way that you want them to work out but that doesn't mean that you should stop going um so yeah just perseverance is really important as well and what what was your route in when did you start um making films and knowing that this is what you wanted to do professionally uh i was quite late i kind of like started i i start i started like um in journalism i thought i wanted to be a journalist i started writing for a black british newspaper called the voice um and i was doing that when i was uh doing my a level so i i do sort of like work experience at the voice you know uh one day a week and then after i left my a levels i sort of like you know do it a little bit more regularly when i was at university and then i kind of like realized that I was really interested in actually you know visual arts and sort of like storytelling I'd always like films and I got an internship at MTV um, I think in 2004 2005 and that was very much where the seed was planted so I was like I was probably about 19 20 um, but you know, MTV at that time was sort of like an incredible like rich place to be because there were lots of young people who sort of like you know were trying to work out what they wanted to do and then you know you had to sort of like be able to edit and sort of like shoot as well so it gave you a really hands-on approach to sort of like making like content um, about music and stuff so I think that's when I knew that I kind of like wanted to tell longer form stories as opposed to just short form stories but you know I think that you have ambitions to tell long stories but you don't necessarily know what those stories are going to be so I think there were just like years of just working out like you know the things that I'm interested in the films that I like or you know and I think London Film Festival helped a lot with that you know because I, I would go every year and just kind of like look watch these incredible films that I might not see in a cinema or like you know that I might not see again and like that really gave me sort of like the courage listening to other filmmakers that would attend the festival to sort of like, you know, just, just kind of like roll the dice and, you know, just, just jump into it. So, yeah. We, we're almost out of time, but I want to know whether you can tell us about what, what's next for you. Yeah. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I've, I kind of like, I've got ideas that, you know, are in the similar ballpark to one man in his shoes, like ideas that sort of like deal with, like pop culture and sort of like American culture, but nothing that I feel that comfortable like talking about. But okay. I, yeah, I definitely, I I'm definitely put you on the spot. Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely want to, you know, I definitely want to make another film. It's kind of like this film, we wanted to make this film, you know, because we believed in the story, but we also wanted to sort of, you know, it, we wanted it to be a calling card that we can sort of like tell a coherent story that can be entertaining and you know can sort of like fuse all of these elements together so yeah I, I really hope that I get an opportunity to make another one because I really want to. I'm positive that you will um, but thank you so much it's really really great to have the film in the festival really nice to meet you and, and you. Uh, yeah take care and thank um, you so much. I hope everybody enjoyed the film and go out and uh, make make another one for us, please, and come back to the London Film Festival. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you so much, Trisha. Okay, cool. Take care. All right, bye.